Well, hello again. Welcome back to the old moon boy. At any rate, let's enhance your life this time. Interesting, uh, I got a lot of calls and letters. Thank you guys very much for responding. Asking, what about individual signs? Sometimes I just go over a general course of the week and people say, I'd like to hear something more about my sign. And of course, I don't blame you. Our signs are very important to us. So what I wanted to do this week is perhaps tell you a couple of things. The, the, this last quarter moon, we see the moon is getting ready now to swing down and become a new moon again. And that moon is going to is uh, in a very wet place. As you can see, it's uh, in Cancer. It's a wet moon in a wet place. So that wet place is guaranteeing some kind of rain out here in the West Coast. And we should probably see that by the time the moon swings down into Virgo, which is a couple of days from now. And that should give us some weather because of the fact that this is usually nice weather here. So we're going to see some nice weather, a little cool uh, because of the Mercury, Saturn, and Scorpio. But as that starts moving along, uh, it'll go over the ascendant, which brings us the uh, possibility of more clouds and things coming in that way. So the weather um, here in the West Coast in uh, Southern California looks like it's going to be somewhat, uh, well, somewhat pleasant, but also we're going to see some rain spattering too. So that's what we'd be expecting along that line. Notice too that now we have cardinal points on the uh, on the angle. So that cardinal uh, cardinality basically means things are going to happen pretty fast. They happen in a snap, you might say. And so when we see that kind of emphasis, we got to talk about things that are here and there. It goes, it goes pretty quickly. Uh, if it were on fixed signs, of course, we'd have longer lasting circumstances uh, as we would if we, as we start moving further to the east coast. We'll see storms lasting a little bit longer. And the cold weather snap, of course, is being shown here in the Midwest, all about these planets right here, a little bit west of the sun. This being the west coast, we can see we're going eastward uh, this way. So east of us, we're starting to see the east coast, the Midwest and the east coast, getting all of this heavy rain and cold weather that's coming down, that cold snap that's coming into, uh, into play. Also, Pluto is intensifying that a little bit with that opposition from the moon. But other than that, that weather looks like we're going to see pleasant on the lower southwest area, a uh, little rain uh, coming in, cold and rainy on the Midwest to the East Coast. As far as individuals go, the emphasis on cancer, and the moon is in cancer. So right now is a good time for cancer types to get out there and do what is yours to do. This, uh, the planet being in its own sign generally says, do things that are good for you. Good time to do stuff that uh, will pay the rent, uh, get your points across and everything else. Don't shoot yourself in the foot here by by laying back and uh, not really responding to anything. Get out there a little bit. That's a, that that trait is really very good for that. Uh, don't don't be afraid to tell the people who you think you are and what they think you are and everything else. So cancer, this is your focus, and this is what it's about. Now let's go to the individual signs. What we do with that is we take a look at where the sun is. And the sun by position of each house from a sign will tell us something about it. So right now, this, this is uh, the emphasis here for Libra, which is, as you can see, the sun is in Libra. The emphasis here for Libra would be pay attention to yourself. And this is a good time for social uh, work, social studies, and, and getting out there and being social with people. It's a good time to be uh, mingling and, and doing what Libras do. The next thing we're going to look at, of course, if we start with Virgo, we'll notice that Virgo is the first house. Well, the sun's in the second house of Virgo, so the emphasis here would be on money. And the secondary emphasis uh, for uh, the Virgo would be the 11th house. So making money, doing doing a joint enterprise with a friend might show some promise this, uh, in the next seven days or so. If we look at Leo, Leo is talking about the third house from itself, you see, because this is Leo, this is one, this is the second house, this is the third house. Third house being communications, uh, neighbors, brothers, sisters, and whatnot. If you have problems with your siblings, iron it out. Get in there and use that, that wonderful uh, Libra energy to balance things out and make sure that whatever's been said is forgiven. Forgiveness is the key and basis for all good things in life. And for Leo, we see that the moon is in, uh, up here in this 11th house, and it's talking about working through and getting through problems with friends and relatives and people that we may have had a problem with. From Cancer, we see that the moon now is in the 4th house. So this would suggest that 
things about the fourth house, which is the home, uh, family ties, family issues, and things like that, also becomes the focus for you. And of course, with the moon being centered here in its own sign, that focus for the for the uh, the sun being down here in the fourth house would emphasize taking care of uh, loved ones, uh, your elders, uh, especially the father at this point in time. If you have if you have an ill father, be sure that uh, you take good care of him. That's that's, that's really the, the the key here. This this sun is awfully close to that. And uh, fourth house. So this is saying that it's, uh, on that angle, it's a little bit more intense than we like to see it. So if dad's giving some complaints but not doing much about it, make sure you take good care of them. If we look at Gemini, then the sun is in the, uh, in the fifth house of that. You see, it's going one, two, three, four, five. So for Gemini, this is a good time for fun, games, having a good time, taking care of ourselves. Uh, a lot of new movies coming out that you probably go see. I would say at least three of them out there that you guys are really interested in. And knowing Gemini, they'll probably take each theme of each movie and meld it all into one thing here and make it into a, um, a complete new way of thinking. Uh, okay, on Taurus. Taurus, well, you got to be a little bit more uh, careful. This is in your sixth house. It's telling you to take care of your health and be sure that you don't overspend on, on things, uh, being that the moon is in the second house of that. Make sure that you take good care, actually third sign, so make sure you take good care of your, uh, your health. Be sure that uh, any, any illnesses, no matter how slight or how small, gets good attention. I mean, you look over here in Aries, Aries, of course, the sun is over here in the seventh house. So this is about partners and uh, working with your partnerships and making sure that things are all copacetic. Notice it's in the sign of balance and it's in its fall from Aries. And so even if your partner stumbles and makes a, makes a problem, you know, don't override it. The easy way to do with this is just be careful with one another, love one another, and be sure that you can take care of business. Also notice that for Aries, the moon here is also looking in the fourth position. So Aries is looking at marriage and partnerships, uh, maybe a new business partner, but also what is a firm foundation of that and make sure that it, it, it seeks its own level. For Pisces, we're looking at the eighth house. So Pisces is looking at that eighth house. This could mad be matters of people that have uh, uh, passed on or matters of the grave, uh, wills, legacies, and things like that that you have to take care of. And uh, that could be a part and parcel of it. But the balance sign of 15 and 15, degrees of that of that sign balance this thing should work out very well for the Pisces over that area doesn't say you won't grieve but it certainly says there are some some things about it um, the moon is also in reflection of that by the fifth house atmosphere which indicates that you know if you have funerals or things that you need to go to I would uh, go with a light spirit and know that the people who have passed on are really happy in their in their new environment uh, a lot of people don't believe in reincarnation but even if you don't believe in it, it happens anyway. Over here, we look at the ninth house for Aquarius. That is telling me, those of you who are under that sign of Aquarius, pay attention to your studies. New things are coming your way, new ideas. Maybe even a great trip that you guys have been planning for a while is on its way. Uh, this would certainly add impetus to that, being that Aquarius is ruled by Saturn, just made a sign change. So you can see changes coming your way, all kinds of ways, probably to the positive, because that looks pretty nice. Uh, uh, Aquarius and Saturn and Scorpio usually get along very well because these two are what we call an antitia to one another. And that antitia, of course, uh, means they reflect each other like an image in a mirror. Uh, for Capricorn, we're looking at the 10th house. And that 10th house, of course, we count the planets go around here. Good for business. Make sure that everything you're doing in the business is above board and really helps the people that you're working for. Um, some of your people that you work for might be a little bit ill this time of the season give them a break cut them some slack know that they're know that they, they love you and, uh, and are working but they might be in that line kind of cut them some slack with that but of course the sun there would, would indicate you would with sag that's in your 11th house of hopes wishes desires safe haven a lot of sagittarians have been going through a lot of turmoil over the last uh, six months and that's because of course jupiter's in his fall and uh, or detriment, I should say, and that detrimental Jupiter acts for uh, acts for Sagittarians as a uh, sort of a buffer. So gear up, buckle down, know that everything that's coming your way is for your own self growth, and that personal growth leads to stronger. Remember what a man thinks he can do, but what a man imagines can't help doing, and that goes for the ladies too. I'm not being sexist here. Of course, Scorpio is the last part of this, and. Uh, 
last but not least, of course, if the sun is in the twelfth house, so this says be careful about you know doing things that you think is secretive or working like that. The sun being here says that it will shine and uh, your skeletons in the closet will show themselves. Saturn just going into your sign, you might see new connections in a deeper level of, of uh, parents and uh, who they are and, and, and how they played a role in your life and what, uh, how that has encapsulated your position today. Remember astrology is the art of looking at signs in a person's life. When we look at your chart, we want to find out if exactly what, when, where, and how each one of these planets have encapsulated a period in your life. So if you look at your childhood, you want to say, okay, what did I learn in my childhood that could be encapsulated to this point in time by which I can use that energy and move on? So there you have this week's, and there you have individual readings from about the position of the sun. It always emphasizes what's going on and where the focus is for each sign. And as you can see here, we did that in a, in a uh, clockwise manner. And I hope you had a great one. Hope you have a great one. And looking forward to seeing you next week. If there's anything you'd like to know astrologically, give me a holler. I'll be more than happy to put it together for you. See you later.